Hey guys, Crystal here at Crystal's Crafties. Um, today I want to show you how to add shadow to an image in Cricut Design Space. Um, so we all know that Cricut Design Space within itself does not have a shadow feature, so you're going to have to use an outside source. Um, my favorite source is Inkscape. Um, Inkscape is so amazing. There is just so much that you can do with it, and it's free. I use it for all of my SVGs and a whole bunch of other design stuff, but today I'm just going to show you how to use the shadow feature. Okay, so you're going to need to go to inkscape.org or um, come up to your Google search and just type in Inkscape and you're going to get it. It's this one right here. Uh, so just click Inkscape, then click on this download over here, and it's going to give you some download options. You just choose whatever is best for you and download that onto your computer. Um, again, it's totally free, so um, it's really awesome. Okay, I've already got it downloaded, so I'm going to not do that right now. Okay, so for this one, I want to show you how to pull the image right out of Design Space and put it into Inkscape. There's several different ways to upload images, but for this one, I'm going to show you how to do it this way. So you're going to want your snipping tool. I have mine uh, saved to my taskbar. If you don't know where your snipping tool is, you've never heard of it, um, your computer has it. Well, your, your Windows, your um, PC has it. I don't know that Mac has a snipping tool. Come over to your little search over here and type snip. And it's going to pull up snipping tool. Um, to get a new image saved, you just want to click new. And then drag around the image that you want. Uh, file, save as, name that whatever you want to name it. Um, I've actually already saved this exact image as America to my desktop, so I'm not going to save it again. Um, when you're doing this, you need to turn your grids off. Um, if you have these grids, it's going to be a lot harder to work with your image. So just click up here once to turn off the little grids, two times to turn off the inch grids, and then you have a plain white background and you can save your image. Okay, once you've got the image saved to your desktop, you can come in and just drag the image right into Inkscape and it will open this little box for you. Click OK, all of that is fine, and then expand to make it bigger. Uh, if you don't want to drag it in like that, you can always um, double click the Inkscape icon on your desktop, come to File, Import, and it'll pull up all your pictures and you can just pick, there it is right there, I could open it that way too. Okay, so a couple things to go over here in Inkscape. I'm going to move this off to the side. This square is your project. Anything outside of this square will not save when you save your project. So if I were to click save right now, it would be blank. Even though this is here, it would be a blank picture because only the things within this square are going to save. Let me pull my picture back over. Um, I want to make it a little bit bigger because it's just kind of hard to see. So well, this is one of the simplest commands in Inkscape. Just use the plus sign on your keyboard to make it bigger. Use the minus sign to make it smaller. Okay. And then also, I want to make this image just a little bit smaller than my save box. So I'm going to hit, I'm going to select the image first of all. Just click it to select it. And grab your arrows and drag them in. Make sure you hit control. If you do not hit control, you're going to get all out of proportion here. So let me undo that. Okay, so I'm going to hit control, drag my image to make it just a little bit smaller. That way I'm working within my box. Okay, so the first thing we need to do here, select the image, come up to path, and go to trace bitmap. Okay, there's a whole bunch of stuff over here. You don't need to mess with it. You don't need to worry about any of it. The only thing you need to make sure you do is turn this smooth off and turn this remove background on. Remember when we saved this picture, there was this white background all around it? We don't want that. So turn the background off. Click this update. You should see what you've got. That's perfect. Click OK. Then I can close this box out. Now you're going to see... There's my bitmap that I traced. Here's my original design. I'm going to pull 
So I don't even need that. I'm going to delete my original design. Okay. So here's my new bitmap. You can see the background is gone. You can see the you know, space here. So that white background has been deleted. And that's exactly what we need for what we're doing here. Okay, now you want to select your image again. You want to come up to Path. And you want to go to Linked Offset. Okay, now it's going to pull up this little diamond. A lot of people drag their diamond to do their offset. I don't like to do that. It just gets all wonky for me for some reason. Okay, when I've got this kind of a cursor, this skinny arrow, I know that I am in my nodes. I'm in my offset. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to change the color. You can see now any offset I do, offset is also just the word for shadow, is going to be red. Okay, I'm going to use my quick commands on my keyboard. I'm going to hit control, right parenthesis. And you can see that red getting bigger and bigger behind my black. So there is my shadow. That is exactly what I wanted. I can take this black part and move it off to the side. Okay, I've got some little holes in here that I need to fill. There's a couple different ways I can fill those. I can double click in here and I, you see my uh, cursor change to the skinny arrow again and you can see all these nodes. Each of these little nodes is what tells your Cricut to cut. It's going to cut here, 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 here. It's going to cut all these little nodes. And that really, really bogs down your machine, and it, it just takes a lot of time, and it wears your machine out. So we want to get rid of these nodes. There's a couple different ways I can do it. I can select. Those are all selected. Hit backspace, delete. They're all gone now. Um, these are still here. And um, I do also want to get rid of all this white space in here. So let me show you the easy way to come in and just fill in all of this stuff. Okay, I want to come up to uh, Path. And then I'm going to scroll down to Break Apart. Now, did you see it filled all of that in? But it also separated this into two different parts. It broke apart all of this stuff. And if I think I'm done, it's going to be a huge mess. Before you do anything else, after you break apart, just come right back to Path and go to Union. Now they're all gone. Now we only have our outside nodes, and this is perfect for Cricut. In fact, this is just a couple little nodes. Cricut's going to love that. So there is your shadow. You can test it out. You can pull your other guy up here. Make sure that it is the size that you need. That one looks good. So we don't need this guy anymore. Our shadow is the only thing that we want. It is within our box. So file, save as, and I'm going to name it America Shadow. And you can save it as an Inkscape SVG. Okay. Then we can close that out. We can come back to Cricut. Upload. Upload image. Let's go find that SVG that we just created. I believe we named it America Shadow. Here it is. Now you can't really see it because it's this SVG now. You actually saved an SVG file to your computer. There it is. Save. Select. Insert the image. Okay. Let's lower that to the bottom, put this on top, size it however we want it, voila, all done. So that's how to get a shadow behind an image. Um, I've also done a video on how to add shadow to text, but I used an app, a smartphone app to do that. I want to show you how to do that in Inkscape really quick because that's also pretty cool. So I'm going to go open my Inkscape. Just double click there. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I just like to see what I'm working with. Okay, you want to come over here to your menu bar and select this text option. And it's going to pull up some text here and just type. <laughs> Hold on. Sorry, I don't know what was going on there. 
So I've got my name. Okay, you want to highlight it, make sure it's all highlighted, and then come and change to whatever font you want to use. I'm going to come here and use this font. Okay, so uh, that's pretty small to begin with. I'm going to select my selector tool up here so I can make this bigger. Again, hold your control to make it bigger so that you don't um, change the scale of your word and make it all wonky. Okay, this is an awesome font, but it's also really skinny. If I were going to put this into Cricut, it would not cut well. So there's a few things I'm going to want to do. First of all, let me show you. It looks like it's all connected. Like if we were to go into Cricut, it looks like it's welded, but it is not. And I'll show you how you can see that. If you come up here to View, Display Mode, Outline. Oh, sorry, I need to turn this to a, um, a path first. Inkscape works with paths. Um, right now it's just a word. If I come up, select it, <clears throat> path, object to path. Okay. Now you can see all these little lines. You know, Cricut would cut right through this. My C would cut into my R, my S would cut into my T, and all this would be a big old mess. So we need to basically weld it like we would if we were in design space. The way we want to do that we want to edit, select all, it's not doing it for me. Each one of these, you can see they're all different here. I need all of this to be selected, so hold on. Ah, it's not giving all of it to me. There we go. There, now all of it is selected. I've got all of this down here, all of this up here. Every item is selected. And we are going to come to Object, I'm sorry, to Path, Union. Union is the same as Weld in Design Space. So now you can see all of my cuts. It's just one big, solid, welded word now. So I'm going to turn this view back to normal. Okay. Now this is, um, like we said, it's pretty skinny, so I need to thicken it. I want to show you how to do that, but I'm going to have to backtrack a little bit to get there. So select your word. You're going to come up to Path. You're going to do Linked Offset, just like we did before. Control, right parenthesis. Okay, that's terrible. <laughs> we don't want to cut that. So here's where I'm going to backtrack. Here's what we need to do. First of all, edit. I'm going to undo that. Okay. I'm going to make this. Hold on. I'm going to make my page really, really small. But I'm going to take my word and make it really big. Okay. So now you can see my save area is pretty small but this word is huge and the reason I've done it this way is when I take such a big object and I do the offset it doesn't go so much at one time so I'm gonna select it path linked offset control right parenthesis now it's just getting a little tiny bit bigger might not even be very noticeable but I promised you it did get a little bit bigger I did the linked offset twice on this one and you can see it all there like if I I've got two of them this top one is the original you can see it's a little bit thinner like look at this S this bottom one is where I did the offset obviously I don't want the top one anymore I'm gonna get rid of it this one is now the one I want to save I'm gonna shrink it back down to my page Use the plus sign to make my page bigger. Shrink my word. And just keep playing with it until I get it back on the page where I want it. Okay. Now it's on the page where I want it. That thickened up my font so that it is um, thick enough for my Cricut to cut it. And now I'm going to put the shadow behind it. The exact same way we've been doing linked offset. 
But to show you the difference here, I'm going to turn my name and turn it this pretty blue color here. Okay. So, path, linked offset, control. I'm going to turn my offset maybe uh, gray. There it is. There's my shadow behind my name. I'm going to move that to the side. Um, we want to get rid of all this space in between again. So what do we do? Double click so we can see these nodes. Path. Break apart. Where is my break apart? There you are. And path union. Okay, there you have it. And then you can just use your little arrows to position that however you want it. There is the shadow behind your word. There might be, okay, sometimes there's a little extra piece in here, but no, this one was good. Now I do want to save both of these because I want them both to come up in my design space. So I've put one on top of the other. File, save as, name, shadow, Inkscape SVG, save. We can be done with that. Go back into my design space. Now I'm gonna upload the thing I just saved here. Name, where did it go? There it is. Okay, it's an SVG, so I just save it like it is. Select it, insert the image. Let me shrink these guys down over here. There it is. And it is already grouped together, but they are two separate images. I can ungroup this and move my name off and move the shadow around. So it's that easy, guys. That's all there is to it. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.